Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Welcome to the Sabbath chat where basically um, I'm, I'm your host. I'm Sheila Rollins. I'm your host. Um, yes. And so basically um, on a Sabbath chat, we basically uh, elaborate on the message that I was trying to give you or that I was giving you on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And so all week I've been talking about giving or not putting off making Christ our Lord and our Savior, okay? And so today, continuing on in that vein, um, I have a little message prepared for you. Um, if you're just joining us for the first time, welcome. If, you are if you're returning, welcome, welcome again. If you have not subscribed, please take a moment to do that. Uh, we'd love to have you. And also remember to like share the video Encourage subscription as you share. Remember to give me some thumbs up because it's encouraging when you tell me that you like it. If you have a comment or a question or anything, you can scroll below at the comment section and you can make a comment. Um, on the side of the title, there's an arrow and that arrow really basically is the description. And inside of the description, there's more information about uh, the YouTube, the, the video for today. And also, uh, basically, my little spiel. So basically, I say it like this, that, um, you know, the Sabbath chat is a part of the Pursuit of Christ, which is a part of Shula Ministries Entertainment and Associates, Inc., where I am the, the host or the CEO. And so basically, we support people trying to overcome anything. And we do it with Jesus Christ being a higher power and also what he has accomplished for us on the cross. Therefore, like AA and NA is deemed um, profitable, well, not profitable, but um, sufficient, you know, they, they've been uh, instrumental in helping people overcome. OK, and likewise, Jesus, you know, so basically, um, you know, he helps us to be complete. He cleans us up. You know, he makes us whole. He forgives us. And however, our part is basically is to like surrender, you know, and so when we want the best that God has to offer. We have to do our part in obeying. And I encourage obeying the, the King James version of the Bible because he encouraged me um, to basically use the King James Version to uh, base my Christianity on. And also, I encourage the Ten Commandments, including the Fourth Commandment, where he says for us to remember the Sabbath day. And so basically, it's the only commandment that he tells us to remember. But however, it's the one that most of us forget. And so the Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath, he says in Exodus the 20th, verses 8 to 11, to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall I labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and he hallowed it. And so if you say unto yourself, that's Old Testament, that's not applying to us. Check over in the Hebrews, um, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 11, basically where it says, if Jesus had given us another day other than the seventh day as a Sabbath, he would have told us. And then it says, there remains a seventh day Sabbath for the people of God. And so, but see, you know, I'm one that believes in both the Old and the New Testament. Okay. Except for those things that God put away, like animal sacrificing, you know, an eye for an eye, two for a two, that kind of thing. But other than that, I believe in the whole Bible. So that's what you're going to get here. So, okay. So let us continue on in the vein that we were. And so um, turn your mind to Matthew, the 19th chapter. And so this is all about salvation. The bottom line is these, cha these two channels that I have and check out my other channel, which is um, Shula Ministries Overcomers Anonymous. Um, it's all about bringing people to Christ closer to Christ and surrendering, letting go, even tradition, 
and even also idolatry, like doing certain things because mommy did it, daddy did it, whatever our care, whoever our caretaker was, babysitter or whoever, but doing it because God admonishes, because he admonishes us to follow him and that's what true Christianity is. So, okay. So the Bible says that, and behold, and this is Matthew 19 chapter, starting at verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, good master, what good thing must I do? What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said unto him, which? And Jesus said, thou should do no murder. Thou should not commit adultery. Thou should not steal. Thou should not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. And the young man said unto him, all these has I, have I done for my youth. What lack I? Now, let me stop right there before I go on. Now, this is, Jesus recited some of the Ten Commandments. He left out like honoring him, worshiping him in vain, coveting. He left out the Sabbath. It was some that he left out. But to this person that came to him, he said enough to where the person recognized that he was talking about the Ten Commandments. Okay? Now, this does not mean that the ones that Jesus didn't mention they're not binding because they are. Because why would he say, don't honor him, take his name in vain, covet, see other people's stuff and you want it? You know, it's okay. Don't worry about the Sabbath. You know, you don't have to keep the Sabbath, but it's not so. Okay. And so basically, Jesus said unto him, if thou will be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Perhaps there's stuff that's in a way that may be preventing us from following God. Okay. However, ask yourself this question. Is it worth losing your soul? It's not worth it to me, but let's go on. But when a young man heard the saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possession then said Jesus unto the disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, imagine that, than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, who then could be saved? Because, see, it seems like the disciples thought what I thought, that to be rich, you have everything, okay? And that basically, you know, what, what else do you need, okay? But here, Christ is saying, you don't have the kingdom, and the only way that you can get it is by obeying me. So instead of this person saying, tomorrow, tomorrow, I give my life. Tomorrow, I thought about today. But it's so much easier to say. Instead of him saying, tomorrow. The Bible says he went away sorrowful, okay? But Jesus said unto them, Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And I love that because, you know, a lot of times we think that we need to fix ourselves up before we come to Christ. And I have some things here that, you know, basically that God has promised. And I got about seven things here, and I believe in a bonus, about some things that God is promising that gives us the confidence to come on, to come on and give our life and surrender us 
our lives to him, deeming that the things on this earth cannot even compare to what God has for us. Okay. And so God, Christ says with men, this is impossible with God, all things impossible. So, okay. So let's go on a little further. So the Bible says in Acts 4.12, basically that Jesus is the only name given among men whereby we can be saved. Now, some people may think differently. You know, back in the Bible days, they had their gold, their, their gods of silver and their gods of gold, their gods of, of wood or whatever it is. Like the Bible says that they were just as dumb as the idols that they worshiped. Okay. And so, but today we find that the Bible tells us in the New Testament, for those of you that don't believe in the old, in the New Testament, only the name of Jesus is where we could be saved. So, okay. Now he promises us if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our, of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. No, 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 hold up, hold up, don't go nowhere. He don't do it all at once. He does it little by little. The Bible says that every plant that's not planted by God is going to be uprooted, okay? And so we don't have to worry about being overwhelmed with, you know, the things that we're accustomed to. And as he takes away the negative, he replaces it with a positive. Let's go on. Okay. The Bible says that he would never leave us nor forsake us. When we're suffering, the greatest suffering that I've experienced on this earth is the death of a loved one. Accidents, trauma. He's saying he'll never leave us. He'll be right there with us till the end. Okay. And then he says that we can cast our cares. We feel bad because somebody died. Too many deaths right behind one another. This greatest person that you love, you know, sick in the hospital, struggling with cancer. Why? They believed in God. God is looking for testimonies. And so as we give our stuff to God, no matter how bad it is, and other people who don't believe see how God has helped us to overcome in the midst of that thing. We stand as a testimony for God. And as a result, many souls are one to Christ. So don't worry about the negative thing. And if you, if you haven't already, but in my other YouTube, I presented a video basically about that me surrender because I surrender stuff on Friday. So check out my Friday YouTube on the other video, Shula Ministries Overcomers and Anonymous, where I talk about surrendering how I, the effects basically of this earth's experience to me. So let's go on. Okay. He's going to, the work that he started in us, he's going to finish it. He's not going to leave it undone. If you've experienced people leaving work for you undone, not doing it well, no. The work that Christ is doing, going to do, okay, and have already done, is going to be perfect, okay? And the Bible says that basically that when he comes, we're going to be changed in a twinkling of an eye. This mortal will pill in immortality, you know what I mean? Um, we're going to be changed. Okay. And then it says that, and I like this one. I like all of them, but this one is a great one above what we can think, ask, imagine, or whatever. These are the things that Christ can do for us, can give us. Okay. And so for those of you that is worried about coming to Christ, and leaving your family behind, your children that may not be doing well. Perhaps they're suffering with some things that you brought them into. The Bible says that if you contend with God, he will contend with you and save your children. Hey, hey, come on, y'all. What excuse you got now? 
And then the last one that I have, and this is my, my bonus, right? Um, he is willing to do the impossible for us. Whatever that is that we think, he is willing to do the impossible for us. So let us not cast off our decision for Christ till tomorrow. Let us not stay on the fence. Let us not linger in returning to Christ if we left, but let us come today. And let us remember there's a war going on for your soul. Jesus is the only name given among men whereby we can be saved. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Let us not say tomorrow. No, let us forget about tomorrow. I thought about today. Oh, please. Your tomorrow very well might be too late. So whatever it is that we're going to do, and I know I messed that song up, but whatever it is that we're going to do, let us do it today. Let us do it right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm praying for my brothers and sisters, I'm praying for myself, Lord, that we would draw closer. We will be all that you have us to be, Lord, that you will forgive us, Lord, and that you will keep your promise. And I know you will. And I ask these things that we will be saved in Jesus name. Amen.